You're listening to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute, a podcast where we discuss both the hobby and business sides of collecting. I'm your host, Mike Summer, and I want to help you buy, sell, and trade your way into a collection you'll love. Well, hello, everybody. It's time for part three of our series on ComC. We've already covered buying on ComC. Earlier this week, we covered flipping on ComC. Today, we're going to talk about submitting your cards for sale on ComC. Now, like I said before, my start on ComC was all through flipping. And for about the first year and a half, that was my entire experience there. But my experience selling online went beyond that. And we've already covered sport lots, which I used from the from pretty much the minute that I got back into selling in late 2015. And we've also talked a little bit about how I use eBay for some of the higher dollar cards that I've got. But there eventually reached a point where I had become comfortable with ComC as a platform, and I was getting enough inventory through some of the collections I was purchasing that I just didn't have time to do more eBay listings or have more sport lots and uh, listings. And so I was looking for a way where I could continue to scale my sales and scale my business without it being another giant time crunch or, or lead to, to a bigger and bigger time commitment. And ultimately, that's when I decided to go ahead and give submitting to ComC a try. So I want to talk a little bit about how it works. And so ComC, again, is a consigner. So you send them their your cards. You send them a box full of your cards. And for $0.30 cents a card, they scan it. They list it on the site. They inventory it in their database. And if it's something that's a little more unique to, to try to track down, they their experts can catalog it and find out exactly what set it comes from, exactly which parallel it is. And so you can be confident that the cards that you send are going to be listed accurately and appropriately. Now, some people that I've talked to balk a little bit about the 30 cent per card listing fee because that can you know technically add up. But it's not really all that bad when you consider the fact that they're doing a scan of the front and back of the card. They're listing it on eBay for you as well. And you yourself are not going to have to do any of the, the packing or the pulling or the shipping of that card when it actually ultimately sails. Once you've sent it in, and once you've identified that it's a card that you want to send in, your only work at that point is going to be pricing it once it's listed and ready for sale. And so for me, when I factored in that time savings and the extra cards that I'd be able to have out there for sale and the fact that if I wanted to list any more cards on eBay, I would have to upgrade my store and increase my monthly charge there. It, that was just an, one more factor of, of how that 30 cent listing fee wasn't all that much of a big deal and, it, and how much more of a benefit I was going to have by by starting to scale on ComC. So that's a little bit about my decision process there of, of why I decided to go that route and my own justification on why the cost I feel is competitive with the other options. So now let's talk a few minutes about how to decide what cards you should send in if you're going to do a ComC submission. Now, like many things, there's always exceptions to the rule. But my rule of thumb, what's worked for me with my business model, is to send in cards on ComC that I can be the lowest listed on the site, the lowest price on the site, and have that card sell for between $1 and $20. That's the sweet spot that I've found for me that seems to work really well. My low dollar basin inserts, or my, my kind of common basin inserts, I sell on sport lots. My $1 to $20 cards, I typically will send in to ComC. And then if it's something that I want to get that money back super fast, I will go ahead and sell, sell that on eBay. And so those higher dollar cards that I want to get in my PayPal real quick, I sell those on eBay. But ComC, I'm targeting $1 to $20 cards where I can be the lowest on the site and still get that $1 to $20. And so that's kind of my first general filter. And so there's a few other things that you can do to, to make sure that the card that you're sending in makes sense to send in. And you can do that research and price check it right there on the site. And one of the, the key things that I want to point out that I get questions on from time to time is how can I tell what cards are selling on ComC? 
And if you go to your your screen, if you go to the search screen and you found some cards that you're you're researching, in the upper left hand corner, there's a little chart that kind of shows the last two years of quarterly sales history. And that's one of the things that I will look at to see, okay, this card is listed for two dollars. I can get it on there. I can price it at a dollar fifty, dollar seventy five and be the lowest on the site. But oh, at two dollars, there haven't been any that have sold in the last two years. I might have to really price that even lower just to get it to move. And on the flip side, you can see, oh, there's a card here that's listed for 50 cents and there's cards anywhere between 50 cents and $2, but there's been 35 of them that have sold recently. I can price this at $1.50 and I'll be the third lowest on the site. And if, it, if sales can keep happening at the rate that they've been happening, I'll have no problem eventually getting up there and being able to get my dollar fifty for it. And so that that last four quarters of sales history in the upper left hand quarter is something that's going to be a key part of your research as you try to decide what cards you want to go ahead and send in. One of the other things that I look for in my research that can sometimes help make my decision if I want to sell it on ComC or one of the other platforms is to identify cards where my card may be the only one listed on ComC. And while you still need to price competitively, it can sometimes give you a little bit more pricing power when you're the only option because there's still people who want to go ahead and just use that ComC store credit for their card purchases and not want to have to mess with going through PayPal or credit card or something like that on one of the other platforms, even if they might be able to get a little bit quicker. So if you've got cards in your inventory or in a collection that you're you're processing and you're going to be the only one listed, you're going to kind of have that ComC monopoly, that's usually another great card to go ahead and submit and send in because it's, it's always nice to have the only copy available. All right, so now we've got our inventory on ComC. We've paid our 30 cents to get it listed per card. Let's talk a little bit more as we kind of wrap up this series about the sales charges and the sales commissions that go with selling cards on ComC. Now, technically, these apply whether or not we're talking about cards we submit or cards that we buy on the site to flip, but it's an important consideration when it comes to selling on the platform. So I want to make sure we spend a little bit of time covering it. And there's a few additional fees that you need to be aware of as we think about this. And the first one is the penny per month storage fee for cards that are priced over 75 cents. And that's 75 cents in advanced reseller mode. And so low price cards under 75 cents don't have that penny per month storage fee but cards over 75 cents do, and you'll be charged a penny a month after the first couple months, I think. I think you get a couple months free if you submit the card originally. It's one of the, the cards that you send in and, and submit it. They give you a kind of a couple month waiver on that storage fee, but any cards you buy to flip, you're gonna incur that from month one. And so I point that out because it can add up, you know, if it's five, 10, $15 a month as your inventory grows. I know some people that, that go even further than that. And so that's something to be aware of. And there's some other options, advanced options, as you really get a big inventory that you can consider um, that they've got that, that raise that threshold for you. But I want you to be aware of that 75 cent threshold of where you're going to incur that penny per month storage fee. And, and one of the, the key things there is if you've got a card, don't price it for 75 cents. If you think it's worth 75 cents, price it for 74 cents and you're not going to incur that storage fee. So that's just a little piece of advice. You know, same thing. I, I do that myself for cards that are in that 80 to 85 cent range too. I'll go ahead and just price them for 70 to 74 cents so I don't incur that storage fee because I'm not sure exactly how quick it's going to sell, and I'm willing to take just that little bit of a discount, plus it makes my card that much more competitive. And so be aware of that storage fee. Now, the second thing that we need to discuss are the sales fees, and that's there's a 5% transaction on every sale. And so ComC's cut is 5% of every sale, and so keep that in mind. That's the, that's the standard selling fee again whether it's a card you bought on the site to flip or whether it's a card that you submitted that's the fee that you're going to incur beyond that if you decide to cash out 
there's a 10% cash out fee. If you decide to use that store credit to buy more cards to flip or to buy cards for your own collection that you ultimately have shipped to you, there's no additional fee. It's just that 30 cents listing fee plus the 5% transaction fee, and you're good to go. But if you want to cash out, if you're going to use that to help generate cash flow, there is a 10% cash out fee. It's slightly reduced if you get a blowout gift certificate, but I want you to be aware of that fee too. In my mind, that maximum of 15%, 5% transaction, 10% cash out is pretty comparable to what most people are going to pay in combination of eBay and PayPal fees. You're looking at 9 to 10% typically on eBay, plus another 3 to 5% on PayPal, depending on what options you use. And so it's, it's pretty much in line, but it's way ahead of the game if you want to use your store credit to buy more cards or to use your store credit to cover the processing fees for more cards. And so be aware of that as well. The last thing that I want to touch on and that I get a question on every once in a while is, hey, I've got cards to send into ComC. But man, I've got like 2,000 cards, and if I send all those in, my submission fee is going to be huge. And my guidance is always in those situations, especially if you're new to ComC, is to pick out one to 200 of those cards that are going to be in that $1 to $20 range and just send those in to start with. Because your submission fees at that point are only going to be $30 to $60. You can learn the site. You can get comfortable with it. And those initial sales that you get from that first 100 to 200 cards will then be sitting there in store credit. And you can start to submit your your other cards in batches so that the sales from those first batches can completely cover the cost of those later batches. And then you don't even have to worry about having several hundred dollars right up front to even get your cards listed. So start it in phases. Start with a one to 200 cards and then gradually build there and use your sales from those other cards to cover the cost of your future submissions. And so that's my final tip when it comes to submitting on ComC is don't do it all at once. Get started with one to 200 cards. Get a feel for the site when it comes to submitting your own and then go from there to continue to build your inventory and use your sales to cover the cost of your future submissions. The other thing about that is effectively you're turning that 30 cent submission fee into about a 27% submission fee or 27 cent submission fee. And that's because, you know, otherwise you would have paid 10% to cash that out. Right. And so if you think about that, instead of using or paying that 10% to cash it out, it's just going right into paying for a an additional card to get on the site. Your, your true cost, your net cost, if you compare it to cashing out, is really only 27 cents per card. And so that's just one more of those little nuances that you pick up on if you do the math. So let me know what you think. Let me know what other questions you have. You know, I try to just cover the main high level topics, the main points, the main considerations that you have to keep in mind. But there are definitely all kinds of little nuances that you pick up on along the way. So feel free to reach out to me if you've got any other questions. And as I always like to do, I want to go ahead and also give a shout out to somebody who gave us another review on Apple Podcasts and NASCAR Radio. Val from NASCAR Radio left a review and he said, if you enjoy cards, collecting and selling cards, this is a great podcast for you. Mike does a great job diving into a subject and leaving no stone unturned each week. Well, thanks, Val, and I appreciate those that feedback. And if you'd like to leave me some feedback, go ahead and pick and, and do that on the, the podcast app of choice. I'd really appreciate it. It helps other people find the show. Reach out to me at waxpackhero at gmail.com. You can find me at the Mike Summer on Twitter, or you can search Waxpack Hero on Facebook or Instagram as well. Well, thanks. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll catch you next time.